You've probably seen gorgeous photos like this of Saturn's rings and wondered, why don't all planets have these? You might think that rings are pretty common since Saturn is the second planet from the Sun and there are six more after it. But you'd be wrong. There are only four planets in our solar system with rings. And even then, they're wildly different from one another. So why don't all planets have rings? Well, here's a hint. Think about how you get a bullseye at the fair. It takes practice, skill, and a lot of moving parts working together just right. And forming rings around a planet is much the same. It's a brutal ballet of celestial bodies colliding and shattering only to come back together in a delicate balance. And it's a very rare occurrence. In fact, planetary rings are not primordial. They're not the stuff that planets are made of. Most rings in our solar system are the shattered remains of moons or comets that got too close to their planets and were torn apart by tidal forces. This is known as the Roche Limit, named after the French astronomer who calculated its path in 1886. Put simply, the Roche Limit is the closest a big space body can pass to a planet and still be held together by its gravity. If something ventures closer, the planet's gravity will actually start to pull the object apart from the center, stretching it and distorting it until it breaks apart. And as it turns out, the majority of ring systems in our solar system form this way. Take Saturn's largest moon, Titan. It's gradually orbiting so close to the Roche limit that scientists expect it will eventually be torn apart by Saturn's gravity and form a thin, dark ring. Of course, not all collisions result in capture. Most of the debris created by the Roche limit just gets flung into space and doesn't form a ring at all. In other cases, a planet's gravity can actually fling a moon or comet into the Roche limit. For example, Neptune's moon Hippocamp is thought to have formed from a collision between a passing comet and one of Neptune's other moons. So to sum up, you need four things to make a ring. A large enough planet with a strong gravity. A moon or comet that gets close enough to the planet to be affected by its gravity. A collision that results in capture. And a delicate balance of forces that allows the ring material to stay in place. And even if you get all of this just right, rings aren't permanent. Over time, the material will either decay or come crashing down to the planet. That's why planetary rings are some of the most beautiful and mysterious places in the universe, but we can only observe them for so long before they disappear.